I gotta set this up real quick. Yeah, that's uh, what's this? Uh, oh, you took me off. Law. Hey, what y'all know about that, though? He about transfer where? What he, what he do? Oh, uh, yeah. Let's see. You say six, eight. Yes. Oh. Hey, this one, get to. Oh, oh, <laughs> ah, this my way. Hold on. Can y'all keep an eye on this right here for me? It's on, it's on uh, Instagram Live. Zoom in on that phone. <laughs> well, I didn't know if you wanted me to or not. No, 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 no. Get some of these females to come up right here. Uh-uh, y'all do that. Y'all want to, don't be No, 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 no. I'm, I'm taking that in one of you. You be awesome. Huh? What? <laughs> you trying to zoom in, sister? Y'all good? Uh, and, uh, the screen, on there. Okay, boom. Okay. Just stay right there, I'll move. <laughs> I'm 
So I know, raise your hand if you heard of Emma Till. I was eight years old, I, I heard of Emma Till. So uh, I was about 10 actually. I got this DVD. I'm not for sure who bought it for me. It was a new DVD that came out. And I was in the basement. And this DVD that was playing, it had Negro spirituals, uh, all these interviews about his mother and her perspective of what happened and other family members. And then, of course, they showed the picture of his face, right? And so, when I see his face and the Negro spirituals is playing in the background, it was about 10 o'clock at night when I was watching, I was a little scared. Mm -hmm. But that was something that I'll never forget. I was 10 years old. And after that, you know, as a kid, I was always curious, always asking questions. And so that really sparked me learning about black history. So Fred Hampton, he was probably the first person I learned about when researching about assassinations. And so uh, we all know that Fred Hampton was killed by the FBI. Um, they had an entire plot on him and then I learned about Malcolm X, and then I learned about Martin. And so today, we're gonna to look at the plot, the events leading up to his assassination, and then we'll look at the events leading up to the trial that proved who really killed Martin Luther King. So who, who, who killed Martin Luther King? Okay, so, so y'all know a little bit. Yeah, we know a little bit. Y'all know a little bit, that's what's up. So, so the, the specific name that we're looking for, if you look up on Google, they'll tell you who. James Earl Ray. If you look it up on Google, they'll tell you James Earl Ray. But his name, the real person who had shot him, his name was Frank Strouser. Frank, S-T-R-A-U-S-S-E-R. -S -S -E Frank Strouser, Memphis Police Officer. So it was a shooter, and then it was a spotter. Earl Clark, also part of the Memphis Police Department. And so we're gonna get into all of that today. Sources, so I got these sources, I got these books in my backpack, I forgot to bring them in. Uh, but The Plot to Kill King, name of this lecture, Orders to Kill King, and then uh, this is one of my favorites right here, The FBI War on Tupac Shakur and Black Leaders. Um, if you read any of these books, I suggest y'all read this first one. I know a lot of y'all like music, uh, it talks about DMX, Jay-Z, 50 Cent, of course, Tupac, Jimi Hendrix, Malcolm X. It talks about a lot of people that you know in his last book. John Patias, he wrote it's a DVD. Uh, they took it off of Amazon because it was too radical. And so uh, definitely tie into these. 
William Pepper, he wasn't just the attorney that proved who killed Martin Luther King, but he was a friend. He had met uh, Martin. He had known Martin for a lot of his life. And so this is a guy, he, the, the guy who wrote both of these, the, the first two books, he wasn't just some guy researching, he was in it. You know what I'm saying? He sat by Martin. You know what I'm saying? It was tied in. And so those two books are very, very important in this research. But let's get to it. The Plot to Kill King. Two reasons why Martin Luther King was murdered. First, he had a great opposition to the Vietnam War. Right? And the Poor People's Campaign. He was going to take 2,000 people to Washington, D.C. They were going to demand jobs, insurance, um, education, many things, uh, fair minimum wage. All these pieces were being put together. So at first, he was a civil rights leader. And then he switched to human rights. So he started messing with their money. They said he got to go. 1947, they had a file on Martin Luther King. 1947. And so... Um, J. Edgar Hoover, the director of the FBI, he had plotted on MLK, RFK, which is Robert F. Kennedy, and of course, y'all know who JFK is. Mm -hmm. And so, he knocked off their whole family. And so JFK, his son had got killed in a, in a plane crash, and then of course, RFK got popped in the head, and then JFK... You seen the video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not doing that. I'm looking at y'all faces, that's why I'm laughing. But so that's that's the game that they play. That's the game that they play. And so he had actually, it was like a movie. He wrote the name down on a piece of paper, he gave it to somebody to give it to somebody else to send it to another person. He said, all three of them got to go. And what exactly happened within the next 14 years? They all left this earth. And so the decision, an official decision to kill Martin Luther King came in 1966. And so um, what had happened was James Earl Ray, he was the scapegoat. And so J. Edgar Hoover, he said, let me get 25,000 to the warden of this Missouri prison to get out our board, right? And then he had a handler. Once he got out, he had a handler named Raul. And so Raul was the uh, a gun distributor. And so he's the guy who gave, who I'm about to talk about, Lloyd Giles. He's the one who gave him the gun. Uh, no, he gave Frank the gun to get to Lloyd to get to the shit. We'll talk about that later. Uh, <sighs> the contract. There was a contract. So the FBI, they reached out to different people to try to see who would kill Martin Luther King or who would orchestrate it. And so they went to the New York Mafia. We know that they bad. He went to the New York Mafia, they said, nah, we good. He went to the Chicago Mafia, they said, nah, we good. Then they went to the New Orleans Mafia, and they said, we'll take it. We'll take the million dollar contract to knock his head off. And so, uh, it was a guy named Carlos Marcelo, guy in the middle. They call him the Godfather. <laughs> the Godfather. And so, he worked in cahoots with Frank and Sal Liberto out in Memphis. And so Frank, he wasn't a part of the mafia. He was just well connected. He was a grocery store owner, but he was about that life. And so they was well connected with Carlos of the New Orleans Mafia. And then we got Lloyd Jowers. And so Lloyd Jowers, he was a, a restaurant owner, Jim's Grill, and he was the connecting piece. And so Jowers, uh, he was, his restaurant was across the street. And so Jowers played a very integral part in the assassination of Martin Luther King. And so what Frank told Lloyd, he said, look, I know you owe me a little change. I'm going to forgive that. And I'm going to give you 100000 if you take part in this assassination. And he said, yeah, I, I'm, I got you. And so Lloyd, uh, <laughs> Cousin the glasses. That's Lloyd. Cousin the glasses. And so Lloyd, he told his story later on. I'm going to skip. He told his story in the early 90s. They broadcasted this on TV. And you ain't going to get that today. They broadcasted that on TV. A guy named Sam Donaldson 
prime time live. A, B, C. He takes an interview and he basically says that when I killed King or when I played a part in killing King, um, I was the gun distributor. So what they would do, what Lloyd did, they gave Lloyd the gun. He would hold it that day, April 4th, 1968, and he would give it to the shooter. Right after the shooter did his thing, he would take the gun, dispose of the gun. Right, and so that was that's all he had to do. That's all he had to do. And the planning and all the logistics of Killing King it came out of his restaurant. That's where they planned and they sat down and they said, "This we're gonna do this, that, and the other." Segway, he had a little mistress. He was he had a little something on the side. And so this was a black woman. Her name was Betty Spates. Betty Spates. And so she told her story in the early 90s too. And so she said, look, this what happened. I thought Lloyd was, what's up? Boy, you said Betty was black? Betty was black. Oh, that's crazy. And so she said, man, I, I thought Lloyd was stepping out on me. He's stepping out on his, his, his shorty. And he got a white uh, a, a mistress, and she think she that he's like stepping out on the mistress with a third woman. And so she comes to the restaurant. Nobody's there. Nobody's in the actual dining room. So she wanted. So she gets to know. She 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 a little nosy. And so she goes to the kitchen. Nobody was there. And so she like, what's going on? It's April fourth, nineteen sixty eight. And then she see that back door is open. And so right as she approaches that back door, a shot rang. And Lloyd comes running past her with a smoking gun. Mm -hmm. And then he asked her, would you ever do anything to, to, to hurt me? Mm -hmm. And she said no. And so for 30 or so years, she's thinking that Lloyd is the shooter. But he's not. Let's continue with the plan. What city did Martin Luther King get killed in? Memphis. 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 He had to be killed in Memphis. That's where the connects was. And so how did he how did they get Martin Luther King to, to Memphis? They killed two sanitation workers. And so they were chilling in the truck. And what they did, they, they literally, the garbage truck had swallowed them up and crushed them. Mm -hmm. Right? And so they had to pull Martin to Memphis. This is 1968, February. And so uh, Frank Colomy of the Memphis Police Department, he, he orchestrates that. Right? And so uh, Martin, he's uh, in Memphis. They're having strikes. And he's traveling back and forth, back and forth. And during this time, there's preachers, and I'm going to get to this in a second. There's preachers giving intel on Martin Luther King, black preachers. And so uh, Frank Holloman, another player in this plan. More players, Russ Atkins. Klansmen, 32nd degree Masons. I know y'all know, know about the Masons. Mm -hmm. They worked well. They worked in cahoots with the Klansmen for many years. 32nd degree Mason, mafia leader. And uh, he was well connected with Hoover, J. Edgar Hoover. That was his partner. And so we got Ron Tyler Atkins, his son. He snitched on Pops. And so he said Pops was paying these black preachers off. And Clyde Tolson, uh, the second ranking official for the FBI, he confirmed everything that the son was saying, right? And so this is Reverend Billy Cowles, and we'll get into him in a second. Uh, one of the preachers who was telling and giving intel on Martin Luther King. Our last player before we get to the murder, Steve Tompkins. And so early in the 1900s, Got to give y'all this background information. Early in the 1900s, they thought that black people were perfect recruits for the Communist Party. And so they were really trying to keep an eye on y'all. And so what they did, they started to spy on civil rights uh, organizations and churches. It was a FBI uh, spy, Ralph Van Denham. I think I'm saying his name correctly. But he was one of the leaders and also... I know y'all know Tuskegee University, yes? Mm -hmm. Booker T. Washington? Yes. So he wasn't a spy, but his, his, the second president of Tuskegee 
R. R. Moten. I love to point him out because he was a coon. He was also a spy. He was one of them that was spying on y'all a hundred years ago, right? He also did a hundred things, but I'm gonna get off topic if I get into that. In this article that he wrote in the early '90s, he talks about obviously you can see the title how they used to watch Martin Luther King's family specifically, and then he says that there was a sniper unit in Memphis on April 4th, 1968, and nobody talked about it, right? Nobody talked about it. And so we got two snipers, two spotters, 4.30 a.m., April 4th, Camp Shelby, Mississippi. These guys are brief. 4.30 a.m. And so we got these FBI officials and they're giving orders to these, these snipers. And so they show two pictures. One of them is Andrew Young and the other one, Martin Luther King. Simple orders. On demand, shoot the kid. And so they, the briefing was over at 5 o'clock. Uh, they come to Memphis. They grab a spot on the rooftop and they took them all day waiting for Martin. And so this video here, uh, we're going to segue to the murder. Billy Cobbs, you're about to hear what he's about to say. This video was used in the 1999 trial that proved who killed Martin Luther King. This video right here, and he's a fool because he accidentally told him on himself. And so I'm about to play a small snippet of what he says. I'm going to skip a lot. The last hour of Dr. King's life. All right, so last hour of Dr. King's life. Let's get to it. Oh, Earth. Well, that gave me the wonderful privilege of spending the last hour on Earth. Three creatures in a room, Abernathy, King, and Kyle. And we spent that last hour together in room 306 at the Lower Lane Motel. The press is always curious and writer, what? He stood here, I stood there. Only as I moved away. So he could have a clear shot. So he could have a clear shot. He thought he was preaching something too, boy. He tried to cover this. And so the snipers. They were they were relayed a message before they got on the roof. <laughs> now we're not gonna talk about Hosea because it's no it's it's not too much information that I found on Mr. Williams over here. But the message that was relayed was friendlies will not be wearing ties. Now what is a friendly? A friendly is somebody who's on your side. on your side. So if Jesse Jackson not wearing a tie, what does that mean? He's on the sniper's side. And so what's crazy is earlier in the, in the day, Martin Luther King and him was going back and forth about him not wearing a top. They were about to go to a, 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 an event on a sanitation strike that, that, was, that was going on during this time. And Jesse Jackson would not put on the top. They said, friends will not be wearing top. And so Jesse Jackson was a part of those preachers. Was telling. The shooting happened early, six o'clock. And so, uh, oh, before I get to that, Jesse Jackson, the room, 304, his original room was uh, on the second floor. And they moved it up to the third floor. Jesse Jackson did because they needed to get a clear shot. Andrew Young, remember the two pictures? So he was in the stairway when the shot rang out. That's why he didn't get hit. And so there were supposed to be two people killed, but he was at the stairwell 
So they only got the main character. Martin Luther King, bullet comes th through the right cheek. They almost missed. Through the right cheek, and I believe down the neck to the chest. And I don't know all the other parts of the body, but it went through to the left side, and it grazed under his left shoulder blade and the spine. But he survived the shooting. After he survived the shooting, they said if he survives, he got to go to St. Joe Hospital. Why? Because who's waiting on him? Dr. Green Bland. And so we talked about Russell Atkins, the 32nd degree Mason, the Klansman, the home of J. Edgar Hoover. That's his family doctor. He has to go to St. Joe Hospital because if he survives it, I'm going to finish him off. And so they bring him into the hospital. The nurses is working on him, trying to save him and revive or revive him. Everybody leave. Get out! And so the agents come in the room. Lula May Shelby. She's the last nurse to leave. Right? And so she already knows it's about to go down. And so as she leaves, she hears... And so what are they doing on his body? Spitting. They're spitting. They also see her, she also sees them remove the tube and grab a pillow. And they suffocate. He dies by 7 o'clock. And so when William Pepper, the attorney, when he gets this information, it's not even from her. It's from her son, Jonathan. Johnson. And so he's older at this time. He's blind, diabetic. He had nothing to lie about. When mama went home on April 4th, 1968, she told this to her family. I don't know why they had to kill me. 30 years later, her son speaks up about it. And that's how we know the information. In the plot to kill King, they have the transcript in the back of the book. You can read it yourself. I got it in my back. That's what happened on April 4th, 1968. And so we're moving forward 30 years later. The trial of James Earl Ray, a mock trial. So he's already confessed. They already sat him down for 99 years. But William Pepper, he's living in Cambridge right now, England. And so they have a mock trial televised by HBO. Once again, some more television for y'all. And they're not going to do that today. But my trial lasted 10 days, 7 hours. And they find him not guilty. And so, uh, new evidence comes about because of this. He writes order to, orders to kill. And so, after more information comes about, uh, we got the Pepper, we got Peppers, and we got the family trying to get uh, James Earl Ray a new trial so they can prove to the world what really happened. And so uh, I know y'all know who this is, or he looked familiar, yes? Judge Joe Brown. Judge Joe Brown. <laughs> <laughs> and so Judge Joe Brown, he was a criminal court judge in Memphis for about four years. And so he was heading this movement to get James Earl Ray a new trial. And then right when he was about to motion for a new trial, they took him off the case. They said he was pregnant. Y'all know how that go. At the same time, James Earl Ray, he's about to die. He needs a new liver. William Pepper, he sets it up, and he's about to get a transplant plant out in the University of Pittsburgh. And then the judge, not the judge, but the jail, they deny. So they're essentially writing his death sentence. He got to go because they're about to expose what he did. So, William Pepper, who you see right here, sitting next to Martin Luther King, he talks with the family. It's 97. It's 97, 98. And uh, the kids are there. Coretta Scott King is there. They're going back and forth between whether they want to do this new trial, whether they want to take 
James, Earl, not James Earl Ray, but uh, Lloyd Jowers to trial. He said, let me do a wrongful death suit. Let me, let me try that. And so they going back and forth. Coretta Scott King, he said, Bill, we're going to court. And so November 10th, 1999 is when uh, the, the trial begins. It takes about 30 days. Uh, the jury took 59 minutes to prove this liability. 30% on Lloyd Jowers, 70% government agencies. And so they proved that 12 government agencies were in cahoots with Lloyd Jowers and the, the Memphis Mafia to assassinate Martin Luther King. 70 witnesses, 59 minutes. I thought it was a new order. Yes, I said Memphis. Thank you for that. Memphis, Memphis, uh, I was thinking about Frank and them. Thank you for that. Uh, there was something else that I was about to say about this trial. They asked for a million dollars at first. They asked for a million, but they only got paid a hundred. Why? Because it wasn't about the money. They said, you can keep your meal. I only want a hundred. I just wanted this to prove to the world that y'all killed my my father, my brother, my husband. And that's the plot. Why do we study this case? Less than a year after Martin Luther King is killed, less than a year, A.D. King, A.D. King, his brother is murdered. And we don't, y'all don't hear about that. He's found in the pool, in the fetal position, in his drawers, rope marks around his neck. No water in his lungs. Lynch, they try to call it a suicide, they still do. But everybody knows what happened. A few more years later, Mama King is killed in her own church. Crazy man, they, I think he was on drugs. They say that uh, he yelled out something like, I, I hate Christians, and he started popping. Mm -hmm. And so two people, it was Mama King and a, a deacon who was murdered then. And so when we look at these patterns, uh, families like this are always taken out. I always compare them to, to the Kennedy family because the Kennedy family was taken out just like the King family. And so we got to study the patterns. We got to figure out what they do and how to eliminate racism and white supremacy because it's all the same thing. And so I, Martin, he lived his whole life. He lived his whole life knowing that he could be killed. His entire life. And so as we come up on Martin Luther King Day, I'm not asking y'all to be Martin Luther King. I'm not asking y'all to be some superhero. No one can do everything, but everyone can do something. What is your role going to be in this chase for empowerment? Thank you. This was in the, the late, the, the early 90s. This was in the early 90s when he came forward and talked about uh, what Mama said when, he, when she came home on April 4th, 1968. Thanks. Yeah. Why take you them so long to like reopen the case? Um, they had to gather a lot of information. They had to do a lot of interviews. And so a lot of these interviews came. So the, the real research came in the, the late 70s. That's when you see Dick Gregory. Dick Gregory, I know y'all know Dick Gregory. Um, he was another uh, person that who was uh, putting forth a lot of research. Yes. Did you have a question or what? Somebody had a question on that. Okay, I'll I ask, I, I ask that one next. Dick Gregory, he put, he put forward a lot of research. And um, William Pepper during the 70s, 
that's when the research came about. Um, but they didn't have enough research until the early 90s to really put that thing forward. So that's why. What question did they got? They said what was Frank's last name? Frank uh, Strouser. S-T-R-A-U-S-S-E-R. He was the actual shooter in the bushes behind Jim Grill. Frank Strouser. But it was okay. Wait. So it was Jesse Lugo in the uh. In the uh that was mm-hmm. Billy Cobb, Reverend Billy Cobb. He was the one on the very end of that picture, or he wasn't in that picture at all. Um, he wasn't in that picture. Oh, okay. Yeah, he wasn't in that picture. That was just Hosea Williams and Jesse Jackson. <laughs> 1888, real quick, I see y'all. For 1888, this, this is why we have the term African American. There was a conference in Chicago, 1988. He came through in Chicago, and that's where he coined, quote unquote, coined the term African American. And so he, 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 I'm going on about him. Uh, Woodley. So you said who was the shooter? Uh, Frank Strouser. So that was the dude, so he was in a motel when you saw him. No, no. That, that's that's all of that, everything that you heard was a lie. Frank Strouds. Yeah, well, that's a lie because you said something about the snipers. I'm confused. The snipers were backup shooters. I don't know if I said that, but the snipers were backup shooters. They didn't know they were backup shooters either. I was not. Mm-hmm. So they'll go for this job. Yeah, if they miss it. Go ahead, Okay, so you know you said Frank Shiloh was a shooter? Mm-hmm. Did, did you have a picture of him or no? Nah, I, I couldn't find a picture of Frank. And he was the and he was the one that used the handgun to shoot him, right? Uh it was a rifle. It was a rifle? Yeah. So, so he came so Lloyd came running through his own but, uh, restaurant with a rifle? So the, the the rifle was delivered by Frank, Frank Liberto, the Memphis, the, the dude who was well connected with the mafia. Yeah. He he was a grocery store owner. And so they actually delivered that, that gun from a uh, vegetable box from his grocery store. So look, I don't know whether what day it was, but they they delivered it to Jim's Grill. And Lloyd, he delivered it to Frank. Yeah. And that's what he and then that's what he had used in the sniper was for like back if he up. missed. Yep. Uh, Did you have a question back there? Uh, they, they say it was about 50 or 60 feet. That's the report that, that William Pepper yeah, had. You talking about the shooter? Yeah. They they claim that he was in so I, William Pepper states in his book that he was in the bush. Oh, there the we go. That's what he states. Mm-hmm. And it was literally across the street, so it was like a clear shot mm-hmm. anyway. Yes. And you said uh the one you thought he just shot that he was on the stairs? Correct. He was in he was in the stairwell. So when he heard the shot, he ran back upstairs to check to see what's going on. But yeah, they didn't have a shot. Um, after they shot, so this how the story allegedly goes, um, what they teach in the school. So they, they claim that uh, James R. Ray was in a, a room, mm-hmm. I believe, and after he shot, he grabbed his bag and he got to running, yep. got to the main street, took a left, he seen the police out there, dropped his bag, which had the gun, which is why they retreat quote unquote retrieved it. Um got in his car, got to Atlanta, drove to Atlanta, and um then he drove to I believe they said Canada or something like that. Dang. And it was uh well it was conflicting it was conflicting stories on that, but they say that allegedly he drove to Atlanta, but that that wasn't the case at all. So, uh, well, I'm pretty sure he ain't gonna know it, but like, 
if you came back upstairs to check like what was going on, why did sh the snipers didn't shoot too? Uh, mm -hmm. once they once they shot, they was out. They was out of there. So they left when he left. Uh, they left when when the sniper when when, when, the, when, when Frank left. They so, left when Frank left. Okay, so I'm just, okay, makes sense. So when Frank left, they was like, okay, it's our Peter go too. Yeah. Any other questions? Go ahead. Hold on, y'all. Pay up. Pay up. How do you think society would be if, like, all the leaders that was assassinated were gone? <laughs> That's a great question. I can't. I can't even imagine it, honestly, because so many of our people have been uh, assassinated. I think uh, the the first person I think about is Johnny Cotton. And so if you look into Johnny Cochran, they say, I believe they say he died of, of a brain aneurysm or something like that. Mm, should I get into this? Yes, I will. So, <laughs> so a lot of people believe that Johnny Cochran was killed. And so around the time Johnny Cochran was killed, he was trying to prep for reparations. So he was a famous lawyer. And he was trying to prep for reparations. And so a lot of people... This thing, I'll tell you how this. This life that we live in America, it's not about race. Now, y'all may think it is, and a lot of people have been conditioned to think that way, but race is a medium, uh, as it's used as a catalyst for chaos. And whenever we see chaos, it's money involved. If you look at every leader who was killed, it involves money. This thing is about money. And when y'all stop looking at it as race, I'm telling y'all, it may sound foreign to y'all now, but this thing is not about race. That's how they confuse y'all and they cause chaos. And chaos is what keeps us separated. That's why there's thousands of Christian denominations and a whole bunch of other religions. Division, different races, races. Races was invented by this guy named Johann Blumenbach and this was what? Late 1700s. Racism was probably one of the first major uh, factors used to divide in America outside of, because in the early 1600s, you could be white and be a slave. Indentured servants, same, same stuff. And so this thing is about money. And once I get to studying a little deeper, you'll see everything that they do revolves around that dollar. The Great Depression. The Great Depression. A lot of people don't know that the Great Depression was orchestrated. Read the book Philip Drew. <laughs> Read the book Philip Drew, and he'll tell you all about it. Then rich people have to like help the uh, government get out of that. Yes. So, um, what's a what's a famous bank? Uh, starts with a C. Chase. Chase. So J.P. Morgan, I'm telling you, that's a. <laughs> <laughs> J.P. Morgan, he saved America twice. Nathan Rothschilds. Uh, Rothschilds. I know a few of y'all heard of the Rothschilds family. He had a quote. He said, "Whoever uh, controls the money controls the government. Whoever controls the money controls the government." And so what they we used to do, they used to loan. The, how you? How you so rich you loan the government money? <laughs> yeah. That's what he did. And that's how he would, quote unquote, save America. And that's why he was ruling. That's why he was running things. Because they was past Rockefeller. It was uh, Stelman, where, where uh, in Clark, where uh, Dr. White went. Rockefeller's name all on. I'll see that thing. A black college. They was one. Rockefeller was in cahoots with Hitler. I'm going on the whole rant. This ain't got nothing. Rockefeller was in cahoots with Hitler. And so in the early 1900s, eugenics, who are the eugenics? Eugenics, the breeding of a superior race and the elimination of inferior races. And so if you was deaf, dumb, blind, or if you wasn't white, you had to go. That's why they had Planned Parenthood. Hello. And so Planned Parenthood, I'm... Tell me, tell me when to stop. <laughs> tell me when to stop. Planned Parenthood. Margaret Sanger. 
She grabbed Martin Luther King one time. And she said, go speak to them churches. And tell them, I want their babies. Mm -hmm. uh, the, first, the first president, the first president of Fisk University, a black man, W.E.B. Du Bois, she grabbed a whole bunch of black leaders. And she, they helped her. Wait, hold on. Planned Parenthood. Parent. What is the girl? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry? No. You said no. what? No. What did you say? I said, oh, I said W.E.B. Du Bois is a girl? No. <laughs> she, grabbed, she grabbed different black leaders. And she helped, they helped her promote this idea, this, this Planned Parenthood to abort black babies. That was literally a part of the eugenics movement. Literally. And so I'm telling y'all, this, this thing is much deeper than what we think. And once y'all, I ain't trying to scare nobody, but I mean, this is real life. Right? Go ahead. Would you agree or not agree that if it was left up to the world being with trading, that we would have been better off? Mm -hmm. Currency became money that became the power that everybody so called needed. But without it, if trading was still a thing, would we have been maybe smarter with um, it's a natural instinct? So are, are you are you asking if money was never created, would we be better off? If if we just stick with trade, if we had stuck with trading. Um, trading was still a means uh, to, so there were certain commodities in different civilizations that influenced and encouraged different people to uh, be labeled wealth. So like for an example, salt. Salt, thousands of years ago in the Sahara, great commodity. If you had salt, you were big time. And so, Things like that. So I, I don't think it well, it could sway either way, honestly. But at the same time, looking back on, on history, there were still <clears> items <throat> that people traded for that made them either big or small. Mm. So without trading currency, what they existed. We used some of the raw materials to create the money, to create the tangible item. So it's like the fact that they created a system saying that if we create our own money by right. using our own natural resources. Why are we still in debt when we create our own money? Why did we, why did they decide to put mm -hmm. a so-called law saying, so, yeah. hey, if we make too much, it loses its value? For, for sure. So this is the thing about money, or money, because, I mean, it's just paper. Mm -hmm. And so when we had gold, I mean, it was a, a totally different thing. But, like, money, credit, it's all frivolous. It's, 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 a, it's a host. It, it really does not matter. And so I see what you're saying now. I would agree. With, I would definitely agree on that. Mm -hmm. I would definitely agree on that. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. I never thought about it that way. That's good. What other questions? How did Malcolm X? Oh y'all, real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. So Malcolm, Malcolm, he was. So there was a y'all look up a guy named Gene Roberts. He was one of the FBI informants who was in cahoots with the New York Police Department. So I'm gonna make this real quick. Um, they they practice. So you know how basketball, you got practice every day. Track, you got practice every day. But they was practicing on how to assassinate Malcolm X two weeks before it happened. So Gene Roberts, she actually walked in while they were assimilating this murder. And they, they kicked him out because they didn't trust him. And so what did Gregory states because of the Freedom of Information Act, um, it's a balcony in the Audubon Ballroom in New York. And because of this act, he got the autopsy. And he was real close with Malcolm. He was real close with Martin, too. Big Gregory, he's not just a comedian. He was an activist. And he ran for president, too. I'm going to tell you about that later. Um, but he said the bullets in his body from the autopsy were going down. Not up. So if you watch the movie or you looked at the information, these guys that came from their seats wanted to shoot. And he said they gave him blanks. And it was really some guys from up top who hit him out. 
And so if you look at more information, they'll talk about Louis Farrakhan and uh, whether or not the Nation of Islam. I don't like to get into all of that. The, the point is that he's gone. And mm, I'll say this. Look at the interviews of Louis Farrakhan. Look at the interviews of Elias before and after Malcolm was killed. And I'll let you make your own decision on that. Any other questions? Somebody asked, what was the aftermath for Jesse Jackson and Hosea Woods? Jesse Jackson, he, I mean, Jesse Jackson walking free. Like, people, <clears throat> Hosea Williams, he, nothing happened to him, nothing happened to Jesse. Because Jesse, he's still running around here like, like sweet. <clears throat> nobody ever touched Jesse. Um, nobody really ever confronted Jesse. And so there's, there's, some, there's some leaders who just stay away. But nobody has ever blatantly discussed his involvement. What else? What else? What else? Do you know about the fact, or have you heard about the fact, or may I, should I ask you, is it a fact that the United States is the only country that believes in insurance? Because you know it doesn't it doesn't exist in other countries. Uh, I'm not for sure. I'm not for sure about insurance. insurance. Don't exist in other countries. I, I, I do know. I do know that. Um, yeah, I, I'm not for sure about insurance. But I, when I think about insurance, I think about how they put insurance on your ancestors when they brought you over here. And so they said, uh, <laughs> uh, Bank of America, Chase. Um, a few other banks, they were selling slave insurance. And so it's not too many too many banks you can choose from today. So what, like, if your slave, like, then her is like... So, yeah, so... So you would have to... You would have to... So after you bought the slave insurance, they would pay... I'm not for sure the percentage. I'm not sure the percentage, but I believe you have to present a death certificate to, 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 to get to get that money. Now they would they would reimburse them the money because you, you were property. You weren't you were not human. You were property, and so they would they would reimburse you. Yeah, I mean if y'all. I ain't hold nobody hostage. I ain't hold nobody hostage. Y'all can, if y'all tired, y'all can roll. I'll still have a conversation with those who want to have it. Go ahead. So, for current world society, do you think that history repeats itself over and over? History always repeats itself. But, in, in, uh, if you're talking about like assassinations and things like that, uh, definitely. There's many people, uh, many. Now I, I don't wanna I wanna put respect on their name, but it's some people who are not as big as Malcolm who was assassinated, or not as big as Martin who was assassinated. Um, and I really hate the Dr. Sebi sl uh, slander on the internet. Yeah. Because Dr. Sebi, let me tell y'all this. I was just gonna ask you a question about that too. Right? Let me tell y'all this. For Dr. Sebi, he's not the only guy who does that type of work. There's thousands of people. In the motherland, in Australia, in America, do exactly the same thing. Dr. Sebi, he was only, he, because he was famous, is why he gets the slam. But we got many of people, thousands of people, who've been doing the same thing that he's doing for thousands of years. Right? We got, uh, <sighs> different papers. From Kemet. I was just talking to my class earlier about how the East influenced the West. And so uh, I think it's called the Papyrus of Any, or I knew one of those. And it talks about it's uh, from Imhotep, and he was the father, the father of medicine. And so you have different ways that he documented that you can um, like ancient birth control, things of that nature. Um, ways to cure uh, different diseases in your body. Right? Dr. Layla Africa, 
uh, read his, listen to his lectures, read his books. Um, he talks about how a disease is just when your body is not at ease. And so to get your body at ease, you have to balance it. You balance it through the earth. And so a lot of people, they like to talk down on people who um, use the earth for healing. But I always say, God will never put you on this earth without giving you the resources that you need. I'm not doing it, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, God, God will never. I, I don't believe in that, so. Uh, two things. So the first one was, uh, speaking of Michael Shebby, is it true that he really found the cure for cancer? Yes. And then the government found a cure 100 years ago. And the second thing was, uh, so we had, well, like, when they first blew up, it was like a, a whole little thing going around. Like, with Nipsey Hussle, when he first died, they mm -hmm. like, it was assassination stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and that his, his friend didn't wasn't really the shooter. Mm -hmm. But they said that he, the reason why they killed him was because he was going to release Dr. Sebi's book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was like a doctor. Yeah, exactly. um, in the documentary. I'm not for sure about that. I could I could say yes. I could say no. I mean, I never doubt it because it's the U.S. government. So I don't put nothing past them. But, yes. Uh, when I see it, when I, when I think about it, yes, that, that could be a, a major factor in that. Yes. In 2021, the president of Haiti was assassinated. Are you familiar with that? And how do you... What are your thoughts on this? Uh, I'm not too familiar with the details behind it. Um, but there, so there's, I love archives. And so I pulled an archive actually the other day, and it talks about how the government, it, literally in the FBI archives, it, they admit how they played a part in killing two foreign, foreign, uh, foreign leaders. Mm -hmm. And so I always say, don't study action, study pattern. Right, some people, somebody can act this way one day and another way the next. Don't study action, study patterns. And so, specifically within Haiti, uh, they've been documented to kill many foreign leaders in Central Africa, in all of the Caribbean, uh, in South America, in England, Russia, all over, all over. So I wouldn't put it past. And once again, everything involves money. And so if you want to see, after somebody is assassinated, see what connections we have to that land, the natural resources, right? So speaking of Haiti, when Napoleon, after the Haitian Revolution, Napoleon, he sold, we would have never gotten the Louisiana Purchase if the Haitians didn't defeat Napoleon during the Haitian Revolution. He was trying to build an empire uh, he was about to bring sugar from Haiti to the Louisiana port and distribute it through Louisiana. But after he lost the Haitian Revolution, after he lost Haiti, he said, "Ain't no point in me having Louisiana. So let me let me buy it. Up. I mean, let me let me sell it." And that's not going to be taught in class. Either. They tell you about Lewis and Clark, but they don't tell you about the slave that they had and how he helped them navigate through the Louisiana Purchase. <clears throat> So you uh, you said several times about the difference between, I guess, instinctive racism and money, and how it's not primarily a race issue, but more of a money issue. Mm -hmm. Because of that, did slavery go on for as long as it did because of the profitability of slaves? And if so, does the racism brought from slavery, does it continue because of a disruption to that money flow? So I think about, I think of when I discuss or think about and kind of evaluate money and racism, the reason, so y'all are familiar with the term white trash. I just posted about this the other day. When British, when the British settlers was coming over here, they brought with them the quote unquote white trash. So that's how they would cleanse uh, England. And so they brought them over here and a lot of them was taken off the street and became indentured servants, right? Andrew Jackson, he was what? Uh, he was an early president. He was the uh, indentured servant. And so this was the early form of quote unquote slavery. 
And so before that, you have natives, right? And the only reason why they switched to African slavery, Bartholomew de las Casas, a Catholic uh, priest, he said, man, we need to stop killing these natives. On top of that, they can't even handle, they can't even handle the workload. But I know who can. Them boys out in Africa. Let's go get it. So I, I feel like there were, I mean, I feel like, yes, there were natives already on this land, but I also feel like there were already black people. I feel like all black people don't come from Africa. I feel like there Correct. were already black people here. So I, that was also in my lecture today in class. So uh, well, I was talking about how 3,000 years before Columbus got here, there were black people. Mm -hmm. uh, and Native Americans are 20,000 years. And there's a, I, so there's a book called The First Americans. I went to a Native American school for my master's. And so I've studied extensively on Native Americans. And I get upset when people get on the internet and they talk about black people are this and Native Americans are this. The DNA, if you study the DNA, you'll get your answer. Um, black skin does not equal uh, what you call black. Because you don't call them uh, you don't call them Indians black, they Indian. And they got, they got color just like you. But when you see them, they're not black, they in you. The Middle Easterns, they're not black to you. You don't claim them, but they got the skin color just like you. So are natives black, or are they native? They are. I feel like wait, the no, Indians. Wait, <laughs> wait. I feel like. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to so, so, We black. So, yeah, 3, I, do, 000, I feel like 3,000 to 4,000 years ago when black people came over here, so they were, we were master sailors and navigators. We know this land like the back of, like the back in front of our hands. And so we was all through this thing. Natives, they definitely had dark skin, but I like to point out that they didn't have the kinks. Mm -hmm. They did not have the kinks. They don't, they, they, they wasn't able to twist and lock and braid. Their hair was just like uh, Karen. And Betsy, you know, mm -hmm. and Sam, Samuel, oh, okay. they didn't have all that. And so this thing is much deeper than black and white. I'll cut you off. No, you good, I'm good. Oh, uh, so I had took this course back, uh, back home in kind of my other city college. So is it true that, like, basically like how they say America was, like up north, but before mm -hmm. like before everything like either came apart, like up north and like some, like some west type, west coast type, mm -hmm. was like men dangerous and then down south, like they said that's where like Aztec, Aztecs and like the Mayans and stuff like that, it's and stuff like that. That's what they owned like down there before it got mm -hmm. taken over. In America? Yeah. Uh, north America? Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm I'm not for sure about that specifically. Like the actual territory, I'm not for sure. I'm I'm always tell y'all when I don't know. I know they was down here though, they was thick. Yeah, I would they, say um they they covered a lot of modern day Mexico. Yeah, if you can tell Penin Peninsula is where um a lot of the major civilizations, the old Mex people, I just talked about that this morning. Um which was before the Aztecs. Um if y'all look up the old Mex heads. I pointed out one today, his name was literally El Negro. Mm -hmm. And so, and, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when we talk about, when we talk, you know what I'm saying? There's many parts and pieces to this thing. Yes, David, did you have a question? Dogon, they they some major factors. They some major factors for real. So the Dogon, they came from. They were descendants of uh, the 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 Kemites, which you know as Egypt's Egyptians. They were descendants of them. And so, when you talk to your phone, who you talk to? Siri. Siri. And so there's a book called Conversations uh, with Ogo Tamel. Perfect, perfect book. It's gonna tell you all you need to know about. It. Conversations with Ogo Tamelu. And 
the Dogons, in relationship to the stars, they claim that they are from the star system, series A and B, the star system. And so, uh, only 50 years ago, we discovered the star system. Americans, or, or white Americans, 50 years ago. And the crazy part is, you can't see it with the naked eye. And they knew about this thousands of years ago. Now, I, my question I ask every single year, because somehow, in every single class that I teach, this comes up. How did they know about this star system? They can't see it. And so, they claim, and they state, I won't say claim, they declare that they're from this star system and they were put down here um, by their God. And I 100% believe it. I gotta tell y'all this piece of information. I gotta tell y'all this, I just thought about it. The origins and evolution of religion. Albert Church Ward, a racist. His mentor was Gerald Massey. And they tell you the truth about uh, Kemp Kemet. They tell, you, they tell you the whole truth. And so in his book, Origins and Evolutions of Religion, so uh, a pyramid block weighs 5,000 pounds. One block. And if you, I've never been there, but if you look at the pictures, you'll see the contrast between a human and that pyramid, those pyramids. 5,000 pounds. In his book, he talks about Manito. Who is Manito? Manito is, was the historian for Kemet. The historian. So this isn't Albert Church Ward's word, this is Manito's word. He says the builders of the pyramid were, were gods and heroes. The builders of the pyramids were gods and heroes. They were not human, nor have they ever been human. And I 100% believe. I got me to military. I So you know when the dinosaurs got destroyed, right? Hold on, hold on. You know when the dinosaurs got destroyed, right? I wouldn't know this. Go ahead. This is my little theory. So an asteroid hit it, destroyed the dinosaurs, right? Do you think that there is something in that asteroid? I have no idea. I'm not for sure. I'm not for sure about that one. But like, how do we get to like the Earth? So many different words. Oh yeah, yeah, pay up, pay up, pay up, real quick. Alligators and turtles and stuff like that. Those are the dinosaurs, right? right? So how did they survive? They, 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 they give us bullshit. Isn't that science? Science? Like asteroids? Isn't that science? Damn. It's called a theory for a reason. Nah, that, that, that was, that was, that, that was, 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 Hey, yeah, hey, um, tie in, tie in. Oh, I just said it was a theory. You know about asking him, though. Yeah. It's good, it's good, it's good. It's good. Oh, good. Y'all yeah, doing too much. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Man, I ain't doing too much. You talking to me? I thought you had a question. Oh, I did. Okay, so when you was talking about the heroes and the God, I was going to ask, like, because you know how, I just feel like us black people was those heroes and gods. Like, I feel like us black people were tall and stuff like that. I just feel like we were we were once upon a time those gods where we knew the earth of the back of the hand. We were spiritually in tuned into the earth. Like, I feel like that was us. For sure. I feel like, so there's a well, not, another book, another plug. It's a book called Giants Who Ruled the World. Read it. And also, uh, if you study geography, <clears throat> you study geography, it mimics, it mimics the human body, and it mimics uh, different technology that we have today. And so when we were building this, this technology, quote unquote, uh, like we were so much smarter back then, we were so much more advanced. Today, 
We're not even. Okay. And where, would you, and where would you say where we fell off? Like where? Like where and why? Oh, uh, there were there were different there were different uh what's the word? Um stages mm -hmm. to this. And so when we look at the post classical era, um we were still dominant. So we talking about six hundred uh B C to, to C E mm -hmm. uh, still dominant. But when we fell off, I would say specifically, um, that's a great question. Because even, even 7 thank oh, oh, thank heaven for 7-Eleven. Even, even then, we were still dominant. I feel like we still have that. I mean, like, we don't have the same technology as we did today. But I feel like we, I feel like we still had, like, strong technology as well back then as well. Mm -hmm. So, that's why I'm confused. I think... I think I would say, if I could pick a, a period off the top of my head, I would say, I would say most recently, maybe within the past 300 years, mm. I would say within the past 300 years, um, for multiple reasons. Um, so, two things, very quick. Mm -hmm. First thing, so, speaking of just to double back a little bit, Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. and speaking of somebody saying, do you believe that, you know, history repeats itself? Mm -hmm. I would say 100% so history is repeating itself because unlike what the one thing the man wanted, which was change, is something that the government isn't going to want okay. because it's a fixed thing. For sure. Like, Say, for instance, we are sitting here believing and still going based off an article that has been written some odd years ago, and they keep it in a plaque saying that we have to follow these rules still. Mm -hmm. This is still the reason why people are getting killed. I say people in general because you have people that are doing the absolute craziest things to babies, older people, black people, Chinese people, white people. Everybody is going off the handle. Because yep. nothing really won't change. Mm -hmm. We still go by systems that were placed by these men who are dead and has been dead mm. years on. Yep. Nobody wants to change the fact that there are men, a specific, hate to say it, race of men, I don't hate to say it, but a race of men that are a specific age that know nothing about women, that yep. don't know nothing about, you know, trying to be mm -hmm. what the other race has been put through other than themselves. Yep. Second thing is, Anything that's strange from the word of melanated is us. Mm -hmm. So that I feel mm -hmm. like if you are afraid of the sun, there's nothing you can talk to me about. As a meaning that I don't care if you're albino because even albino, they have no pigment, but they're still melanated because yep. they're still black people. They're just albino. Mm -hmm. I've never seen an albino white. So in a sense of how many of us that are melanated, that have pigmented skin, mm -hmm. not even specific on African American or Hispanic mm -hmm. or Chinese, anything that's able to be Come. not burnt. Because melanin is in sunscreen, mm -hmm. which is what protects the non-pigmented skin. Mm -hmm. So how are we not superior? And what, like she said, what made us fall off is the fact of us forgetting that our skin has been made of gold and it comes from sunlight. Mm -hmm. So if everybody could just realize that, you know, we're more powerful than what the electricity is that runs through our houses, we ran off the main Love generator. Okay. Me too. Love I love it. that. <laughs> she, 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 she said a lot right there. Uh, and I, I, I hope y'all caught that because, and so, one thing that I thought about while you were speaking was, y'all, pay up. One thing that I was thinking about while you were speaking was the process behind the, the destruction of the pineal gland. And so going back to what Jayana had asked, what we fell off, and we got to think about around 300 years ago when they started to really look at this and say, oh, yeah. This is what makes you you. We're going to take care of that. Um, chemistry. Chem. C-H-E-M. So we got commit, 
which is Egypt, then we got chemistry. C H E M. Chem literally means black. And history is the study of. And so a lot of people say chemistry is the study of black particles or melanin. And so I'm saying this thing is, is, is right in your face, and you just don't know it. I'll say this, Samson and Delilah, that's a story straight out of Kemet. And Samson, if you look up their names, Samson, Sun, Delilah, Night, Moon. And so that's a that's another parable. They plan, they if you study etymology, they'll you'll figure out everything you need to know. Samson, Sun, Delilah, Moon. They they plan you right in your face. So I got a question. Based on what you just said. I mean, on what you just said too, how you said Samson is wild, but Samson is from light. So why did they put it as, as if his powers came from his hair? Oh, yeah. Powers. Yeah. I'm confused. So when he cut it. So when the, when when, the Lila cut it. So who, 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 he, he who was ruling? He considered to lose his power. He Correct. considered to lose his power. Correct. Yes. So it's a, it's a play on with. So Haru and Set. And so we study. Should I? Yeah, I guess. It's a long story, but I'll try to make it short. The story of Lion King. The story of Lion King is equivalent to the story of Osiris, Haru, and uh, Isis. Right? And so when we talk about the, the, the battle between sun and the moon, we're talking about the same thing when we're looking at uh, the, the trinity. Trinity within Jesus and them, and in the Trinity in Kemet. And so if you look at the story of Lion King, uh, why did Scar kill Mufasa? He wanted to be king. He wanted to be king. And so same thing happened in Kemet with Set or Satan and uh, Osiris. And so Set killed Osiris, cut him off, cut his body parts into 14 pieces, scattered them all across the land. I know the Washington Monument, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and so at one point that was the tallest structure in America. And so the same structure is it's called an obelisk, Greek word, but it's called a tech. Right? It's called a tech. And so cut his body up into 14 pieces, scattered across the land. Isis' his wife recovered these pieces. And it was one piece that she didn't find. His heart. So what does that Washington Monument look like? <laughs> what does it look like? Yeah. Oh, oh, man. Man. Oh, man. My voice is a dagger. It's a dagger, all right? It look, it's a phallus. And so the Washington Monument is a giant piece. It's a deep. <laughs> And so going back to the story, I don't know how I got there, but going back to the story, when Osiris, when Haru conquered Set, this was the battle between night and day. So every day, the symbolism behind the sun rising would equate uh, Haru conquering Set. And then the sun setting, sun set, set the goddess in, or not the goddess, but the god in Kemet, Sunset, y'all see the play on there? That would equate set conquering Haru. Horizon, the sky, hour, Horus, horoscope, and Horus in Kemet or Egypt, he was a falcon. Is it a falcon? Yes, the highest thing in the sky. Hawk, highest thing also represented by the sun as well. And so it, it gets real tricky through different stories. 
but he had uh, a zoo type. Every god or goddess in Kemet had a zoo type. And so half human, half animal. And so this wasn't them praising gods. This was them trying to describe uh, characteristics of the body and make sense of their reality. That's all that was. That's what it was the daylight. And this would connect to everything the Odyssey said. Like my three kings and all that. Uh-huh. It's about the entropy of space, right? So who? I'm, I'm not. And, and, and you see the history, right? Okay. I'm, I'm about to give you the history background. So entropy trying to make all. Um, he's trying to promote toxic masculinity. It's not toxic, it's just them being men being taking responsibility for their own self and all that stuff, right? And, I look, and when people uh, say about technology and how technology is really bad, and technology is like really bad and all that stuff, and I see him trying to prevent that from happening and try to avoid all the people from doing all that, right? Is that still going? Yeah. And so, <laughs> When Andrew K got arrested, I remember what he said. He said three things. They were chanting, then they were arresting, and if they don't do that, they would just kill me. So what I'm trying to know is, is that true? And also, and also another question is that, is technology the reason for our downfall? Um, technology has good and bad. But honestly, I have no idea who Andrew Tate is and what he did. But I don't think I don't think he's a major factor like that. I don't think he's important enough for them to um, target him on that level. But yeah, technology very much dumbs us down. I'm not gonna get into that. Because like that's a whole other rabbit hole. But I think that's uh, what time is it? I think that's all we got time. Seven o'clock. Do you want to end? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I want to see the comments. I'm kind of curious, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm hold some more. I'm gonna hold some more. We will get into we'll get some more. Andrew Tate. I said, you know, I'm 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 Yo. All right, cool. Push it up. All right, boy. <laughs> Hey, I fuck with the name. Oh, it's just a question that was on. I appreciate that. I was in the SGA meeting, but I wish I was there at the beginning. Please let me know when you do it again. Thank you, thank you. What's up? Me and you gonna talk. Me and you gonna talk. Okay, I'm here. Me and you, me and you, me and you, AJ. Me and you, AJ. Me and you, gonna talk. Right on. Yeah, yeah. This is me right now. All right. What's up? Oh yeah, I appreciate it. Before you talk your head off, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate y'all. So intelligent, so smart. Keep that up. Yes, sir. Keep that up. Man, yeah, I'm gonna holler at him. Uh, One of them was conversation. It was a book, I believe. It was. You said it was conversation with. Uh, Ogo Tameli. How you spell it? Uh, O G O T E. Uh, M M I L L I. I'm pl- I'm pretty sure that's how you. I'm pretty sure that's how um, that's how you spell it. I'll go to Maryland. Yep, yeah, great book. Hey, you said one of them was etymology. Uh, etymology. Study that. That's that's some uh, that's some good stuff right there. Definitely study that. How you spell etym? Uh, e T Y M O L O G. Uh, why? Etymology. Mm-hmm. Yup. So, do you know the name of like any of the um the gods that helped like build gods of heroes that helped build the arm pyramid? Uh, nah, he didn't. He didn't say that in the book. He just said there was gods, gods and heroes. Um, but I believe so. This is specifically what I believe. So this hasn't been proven, but this is what I believe. I I think that um that the gods and the heroes were within us. Yes, sir. And so I believe that humans built the pyramid, but we had um, special powers that allowed us to build the pyramids. Um, because back then, so it, it, it's crazy, but mm-hmm. um, <sighs> movies, they tell on themselves a lot. And so when we talk about uh, 
the difference between a human today and yesterday, uh, definitely we're talking about the pineal gland. We're talking about what we ate and the, the, uh, the interactions we had with the gods. And so I wholeheartedly believe that the gods were more interactive with our people thousands of years ago versus today uh, because of a number of different factors. And we're talking about from everything from the chemtrails to the food we eat to fluoride. Every, yep, fluoride too, mm-hmm. all of that. And so that's, that's very real stuff that people don't understand, but, you know, they, they will. Eventually they will. So it's sort of like the um, Orishas? Say that again? So, like, were, like, any of the gods that, like, helped out with, like, pyramids, were there, like, any of the Orishas? Um, so that is, so we have Orishas, um, a lot of those were in South America. Mm. That's what they believed down there after they came from the Caribbean and uh, West Africa. So, um, it's not too many uh, African Americans who, who practice, uh, but... Oh, so you're talking about in Africa. I'm tripping. Mm-hmm. You're talking about in Africa. Uh, so they had, that was on the other side of town. Mm-hmm. And so on the east side, they had uh, different gods versus the Orishas. So they had different ones, like outside of like Shaka Zulu and them? Mm-hmm, correct. Yep. That's what's up. I'm trying to figure out how to, how to end this thing. I like stuff like that. Yeah, man, this, this shit crazy. Hey, shit. Appreciate it. For sure, man. Let me see how let me see how to end this. <laughs>